Okay guys, so in today's short video, I'm going to freshen up a old Watkin AGS-10 fence to use with my restored Watkin AGS-10 saw. And the reason for this is I haven't done a resto in some time, seeing as my compressor restoration didn't work out so great, and I've been going through a bit of restoration withdrawal. If you recall the saw restoration videos, you would remember that I didn't have the original fence for the saw and I had to make do with what I had while I considered possible alternatives or an upgrade for my fence. If you haven't seen those videos, I will link it down below if you want to check it out. Shortly after posting those videos, I was contacted by a very generous local gentleman who has the same saw and had recently done a fence upgrade. He offered me his old fence and as far as I know, it is the original AGS-10 fence, so why would I say no? Now the fence in question might look a bit beat up, but I'd say at face value it looks in pretty decent shape actually. It doesn't look like there's anything mechanical or physical that needs to be repaired. So if everything goes well, I should only have to strip off the old paint, strip off the rust, give it a fresh coat of paint to suit my saw and I should be good to go. But I'll have a better idea of the mechanical condition or the physical condition of all the components once I take everything apart. Right, so as per usual, I start by stripping the project down into its bare components because assessing potential damage on individual components is much easier. It's also easier to work on a game plan on how to repair it, clean it and paint it before reassembly. And stripping the fence down into its three main components was fairly straightforward. It involved removing three bolts and one socket type nut. Now at this stage I'm first going to clean up the two fence rails which are quite rusted and dirty. And it should involve only stripping off the old rust and polishing the rails. The first step on the rails is the rust removing step and to do this I need to submerge the rails in the rust removing agent. So I cap two pieces of PVC pipe that is slightly bigger than the rails. This way I'll use as little as possible of the rust removing agent. Now guys, at this point, I quickly want to take a moment to apologize. I know I just said that this is going to be a short video, but after finishing the project, it actually turned out to have quite a bit of information that I would like to share with you guys. So the video turned out to be a bit longer than I originally planned. So I apologize for that. Now guys, the rust removing chemical I use, which by the way, I'm not sponsored by, I buy it myself. It does a great job at removing rust, but it does leave the object a little bit dull. So after the rust removing step, I like to follow it with a polishing step, which involves using WD-40, once again not sponsored, and a Scotch-Brite pad to bring out a nice metal shine. I then use a wire brush on my drill just to remove any impurities or dust settling in pit marks and stuff like that. And as usual, I am quite pleased with the results of this technique. Now this time the one rail has what seems to be a brass strip embedded into it. So I'm going to use a brass polishing compound to just get a bit of a shine out of it. So far so good, the rails look fantastic, now it's time to move over to the fence. Okay. 
I was quite surprised at how easily this thing took apart, which leads me to believe that it was taken apart probably not too long ago. Now with all the smalls prepped and ready to be assembled, the next step is stripping off the paint off the other components. Now guys, I've said this before, I need to invest in a sandblasting setup because without one, I only really have one of two options. Either I need to pay somebody else to sandblast these components or I have to go the chemical route to strip off the old paint. This time I did go with the chemical option because the parts aren't that big but it is a labored process to get the old paint off and to get the surface smooth enough to be repainted. Stripping the paint off of the components with the curved surfaces was particularly tedious. That required a number of reapplications of the paint stripper after scraping off whatever paint was lifted by the chemical. Right, so with all the old paint stripped off, I am ready to add a fresh coat of paint onto this fence. Now, the fence was definitely repainted before at some stage, and they even painted over the machined areas. This is something I don't do because the machined areas are machined for a reason. So I'm going to cover this with tape before adding the fresh coat of paint. And after covering the machined surfaces, I also blocked up the machined holes to prevent paint from going in there with small pieces of material. Now 
Now guys, I'm going to paint the fence to match the color scheme I chose for the saw, which is charcoal gray and black hammer tone. And before I do, I'm going to add a coat of edge primer. I like to do this with cast iron because it gives me a slightly smoother surface to paint on. Now at this point I was quite irritated because I haven't used my spray gun in a while and obviously the previous time I used it I didn't clean it properly because there was a nozzle blocked and that's why it was giving me this huge spray because the adjustment knob was not doing anything to the gun. So I cleared that out and I continued painting. Then I did apply one generous layer of edge primer because as I said it gives me a nice smoother surface to paint on which I do like when I have to repaint a cast iron. And with everything prepped and painted, the last stage of this project is to get everything assembled. While reassembling, I obviously lubricate all the areas that need to move. And for these areas that don't move so much but aren't really painted, I like to add a anti-seize compound so that if I have to take the unit apart in the future, I won't have any issues.
Now guys, at this point, I will admit that the Microwinder is not in the greatest shape. Out of this entire fence, this is probably the worst looking or worst worn component. So I will look at getting another pinion machined and get this fence back into tip top shape with that part. For now, however, this one will have to do. Right guys, so that's the fence restored, or not really restored, but cleaned up and repainted. And I think it looks great, and I think it's a fantastic addition to the saw. As for functionality, well, adjustment is fairly effortless and the locking mechanism is solid. The only issue I have with it is that the body over here is not 100% flat. It's bent in a few places. Now for now it will work just fine, but going forward if I want to repair it, I only really have one of two options. The first option is drawing up this body so that I can have a replacement laser cut and bent but that would require a little bit of spot welding which I'm not really set up for so I'm not really keen on that idea. The second and more likely option for me is installing a wear plate onto the fence to give me a flat surface and this has the added advantage of being replaceable if it ever gets damaged. Now guys, I do intend to start using this saw in my workshop and I am going to be incorporating this saw into my new bench that I'm building for my workshop. This saw is not exactly finished yet. I do need to sort out the arriving knife and blade guard still, but at least at this point it looks great and it is usable. But that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Going forward, what you can look out for? Well, I need to get started on my new workbench because at this stage, the workshop is in a bit of a state. I've also got a few shop improvements that I am working on and I'm always looking out for other machines to restore. So if you aren't subscribed yet and you want to see those videos, remember to do that now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time. Cheers.